UK boasts 16 national trails that pass through some of the best landscapes this country has to offer. And what you may not know is that two of them can be found right here in Kent. Now, I've come to explore one of those two national trails, the North Downs Way, to discover some of the fantastic history, nature, activities and art you can find along the route. And I'll be meeting some of the people that help make it such a fantastic place to visit. So, let's get trekking. The North Downs Way stretches 153 miles from Dover's famous white cliffs in Kent to Farnham in Surrey. Along the way, this majestic route passes through two areas of outstanding natural beauty, as well as many other historic monuments, towns and villages. Kent's other trail is the England Coast Path, which is the UK's 16th and most ambitious national trail yet. When completed, it will be the longest managed and waymarked coastal path in the entire world, at an impressive 2,800 miles in length. To start my trip, I've come to Dover, the place where the North Downs Way National Trail begins. Or finishes, I guess, depends on which way you want to look at it. Now, to get to Kent from London is very easy. It's taken me just over an hour on the train. Now, to tell me a bit more about the trail, what makes it so special, and a bit about the Experience Sustainable Tourism Project, who better to speak to than the North Downs Way National Trail Manager, Pete Morris. I think this is him just now, right on time. All right, Rob, how are you doing? <laughs> Good to meet you, Pete. You, now, you are basically in charge of the North Downs Way National Trail, are you? Yeah, that's right. All right, that, a privilege of job. What, what makes it so special for you? Well, it's fantastic for me personally. I, I spend a lot of time outdoors. The trail is, is uh, very special in lots of ways. There are urban areas like Dover, and there's lots of remote rural areas, and lots of little towns and villages in between. It's really well connected and got some great, great views. The North Downs Way National Trail isn't the only national trail though in Kent, is it? No, that's right. We've recently opened a section of the England Coast Path and uh, around the country there are other sections opening all the time. And once it's open, it will be the longest coastal trail in the world. For the next two or three years, we're going to be working with local tourism operators to create these new experiences all along the trail. Pete, thanks very much. Nice to meet you. No problem. I'm on my way. Cheerio. You can follow the North Downs Way along the iconic cliffs of Dover, but you can also take the short walk down to Samphire Ho. This stunning nature reserve that was created from 4.9 million cubic meters of chalk marl that was dug up from under the sea when they built the Channel Tunnel. Although Samphire Ho is man-made, it's a model of biodiversity home to hundreds of rare and beautiful plant and animal species. Head ranger Paul Holt is here to tell us a bit more. So, so tell me, typically what might I expect to see on a visit to Samphire Ho? I'm talking about plants and, and, and creatures. Yeah, I mean it always changes with the season obviously. If you're in the depths of winter you're going to experience the real wildness of it and the weather and the storms and the waves or the cold chilliness. But actually the summertime there's lots more in flower. The wild cabbage is in flower at the moment. If you're lucky you might see an adder sliding across the path. The skylarks are singing just as you walked up the path. The fastest bird in the world went through the peregrine falcon. You know, it's just a wealth of wildlife. Whatever the season, just you know, it's an amazing place to visit, but it's different every day you come. Well, I am heading back up onto the trail now, but it has definitely been worth a visit. Paul, lovely to meet you. Thank you, nice to meet you too. Take Enjoy care. your walk. Thank you. <laughs> Dotted along the North Downs Way are a wealth of historic buildings. The route passes eight castles, three archbishops' palaces, and three cathedrals. Of course, no trip here would be complete without following in the footsteps of countless pilgrims to the world-famous Canterbury Cathedral, where people have worshipped for the last 1,500 years. The cathedral is the destination point of the famous pilgrimage, immortalised by Chaucer in his Canterbury Tales. There are two historic pilgrims paths, both leading here. One from Winchester, which today makes up part of the North Downs Way, and one from Rochester. Canterbury Cathedral is also the beginning of the Via Francigena route to Rome. From its first Archbishop Augustine, who established Christianity in England, Canterbury Cathedral has been at the centre of some truly historic events. In the 13th century, Archbishop Langton played a role in negotiating Magna Carta, 
and in 1170, his predecessor, Archbishop Thomas Becket, was famously murdered here in the cathedral after a power struggle with King Henry II. The epicenter of pilgrimage in the UK, Canterbury's history is as rich as it gets. Continuing with the theme of pilgrimage, I'm about to visit the oldest church in the English-speaking world that's still used for worship today. Along with Canterbury Cathedral and St Augustine's Abbey, St Martin's Church forms part of the Canterbury World Heritage Site. It was here that St Augustine set up his mission when he arrived from Rome in 597 AD to convert the English to Christianity. But pilgrimage isn't consigned to the pages of history. I'm here to meet Dawn Champion from the British Pilgrimage Trust to find out about the growing popularity of pilgrimage today. But I mean, obviously with Canterbury here, a lot of that pilgr pilgrimage is about Canterbury Cathedral, is it? It is, yeah. yeah. So obviously Beckett's Shrine um, is the place that really uh, started to kick things off yeah. here. Um, and you know, what you saw in the medieval period was not just uh, pilgrims coming from, um, from England, but also coming across from Europe as well. And so that's where you end up with this real network of routes, uh, people coming from over the continent and literally picking up the nearest path that was available to them and then traveling onwards to the city. But um, there are so many different aspects to explore along the way. It's not just about that final destination anymore. Um, pretty much every single community has got a story to tell or um, you know, a, a really kind of fascinating holy place, whether it's a natural spring or an ancient tree. Don, really nice to meet you. Thank you very much indeed. There's nothing like a brisk walk in England's great outdoors. The Kent Downs is a designated area of outstanding natural beauty and it's easy to see why. The scenery is breathtaking. Some of its best views can be found here at the Devil's Kneading Trough, part of the Y National Nature Reserve, with the North Downs Way passing straight through them both. The site's bowl-shaped appearance gives rise to its name. It's home to several rare species of orchid and moth, so nature lovers should keep your eyes open. At the edge of the nature reserve, at a fording point of the Great Stour River, sits the picturesque village of Wye. In 2013, it was voted the third best place to live in the UK. The Romans and Saxons must have agreed, as both had settlements here. The Wye crown was cut into the North Downs chalk in 1902 to mark the coronation of King Edward VII. Now, if cycling's your thing, Y is on Route 18 of the National Cycle Network. And if all that pedalling works up a bit of an appetite, there are some great pubs along the way to stop off at for a nice bite to eat. And talking of food, my next stop is the nearby village of Brook to visit a sustainable farm growing fresh, organic produce run by Ed Kirksmith, also known as the Rebel Farmer. Ed's gorgeous three-acre homestead here is just a short walk from Y Downs in Brook, and it's dedicated to building biodiversity. And fruit, vegetables and flowers of all types and varieties are grown here. Let's go and have a look. With towering enthusiasm for seasonal local produce, Ed uses his farm to showcase his organic farming methods and hosts a range of activities here. There's even a massive 21-foot teepee where you can stay as a guest. Aside from the food though, are you developing other experiences here at the farm? Yeah, yeah, we're very keen to sort of share um, what we've learned so far here and, 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 um, and try and sort of create an inspirational type experience for, for people that come here to maybe sort of think a little bit sort of deeper about where their food comes from, how they consume it and um, how they might even sort of think about doing that themselves. Um, we sort of, you know, we really want to try and create a whole army of young farmers, really, that can sort of start to think about, um, um, you know, regenerating the landscape that's uh, so badly damaged. But the experience is going to be, you know, very much based around food and, and, and how that brings people together and how you can, you can grow a lot of it here in the lovely Kent Downs. And also very lucky to be joined by Stefano here from McNaid's. That's right, McNaid, yeah. Kent has long been known as the Garden of England, but it, it really feels like here that we're, there's 
a real focus on quality of, of the ingredients and, and quality of the materials that are being produced. I, I think absolutely, and, and, and it's been, I mean, it's been growing more and more. I mean, it, it, don't get me wrong, a lot goes into these, so often people, are oh, they're expensive, they are what they, no, what they are, they're fair for what, what, what you get, and the taste profile is something else, and that, that's a, a combination of the quality of the ingredient, which absolutely reflects its provenance, its terroir, it's, 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 it's an indication of the time and effort that's put into these products to create them. Yeah. You know, take a cheese like Winter Dale Shaw, I mean, that's a 10-month aging process, and that, that cheese alone, yeah? You've got one, one one guy there who's hand making it himself and so you're getting a wonderful wonderful cheese that really reflects uh, its origin I mean it will change with the season so again the grass as it changes from spring all the way to the summer and then as the cattle feed in the in, in, indoors in the winter you'll get different flavors in the cheese themselves depending on when the milk was actually from the cattle uh, so you is it absolutely the case that I mean I think food and drinks are sits at the heart of our community you don't get it better than Kent Travelling northwest, the North Downs Way passes through the village of Otford in Sevenoaks on the banks of the River Darrant. Here you'll find what remains of Otford Palace, one of several palaces that used to belong to the Archbishops of Canterbury. Having been rebuilt on a grand scale in the 16th century, the palace caught the eye of King Henry VIII, who claimed it for himself. On his death, it passed to Elizabeth I, but she soon lost interest in the palace, and in the 17th century, it fell into disrepair. I'm here with Nick Rushby from the Archbishop's Palace Conservation Trust. And so how important is the work of volunteers with your organisation in, in helping to achieve that, yeah. to, to, to keep that heritage alive? Yeah, very. <laughs> um, we have no paid employees. It's all done with volunteers. All the trustees are volunteers, all the people who work in the museum area are volunteers. Um, and when we finally get round to dealing with the, the gardens here, volunteers again. So crucial. It's 100% done by volunteers. and 100% by volunteers. Well, leaving Otford signifies the end of the Kent leg of my journey along the North Downs Way. At my next stop, I'll have crossed county lines from Kent into Surrey. Follow the trail from Kent into Surrey, where you'll find the medieval market town of Reigate. Its ruined castle was built soon after the Norman Conquest and hides an extensive network of caves beneath it. It's also the site of a Bronze Age settlement and a Neolithic flint mine. If you're on the lookout for great views, there are some breathtaking vistas along the North Downs Way, including Caterham Viewpoint, Botley Hill, St Martha's Hill, and this, the view from Rygate Hill. Just stunning. This memorial was created by sculptor Roger Day to commemorate an American B-17G aircraft that crashed here in 1945, tragically killing all nine of its crew members. The sculpture is made from ancient Surrey oak, with its two pieces placed the exact same distance apart as the aircraft's wingtips. Buried deep at the centre of the memorial is molten metal recovered from the crash. I'm here with Rob Fairbanks, who's director of Surrey Hills area of outstanding natural beauty. H yeah. How important is it having the North Downs Way come through the Surrey Hills? Well, it's almost like our recreational motorway. And what is mm -hmm. so fantastic about the North Downs Way, it is so accessible. And we got the walkers on it, I say the horse riders, the cyclists. And we have so sort of the conflict, you know, too many people in the countryside. But I'm a user, you know, I run here most weekends on the North Downs Way. And genuinely, it's brilliant because people, once they're out and about, they all get on. We got a campaign, be nice, say hi, you know, just communicate with each Love other. That. And it just puts smiles on people's faces to be in nature. Well, it's, well, so walking along through here, as I am doing here now, it's definitely doing that for me, Rob. It's putting a smile on my face yeah. every step of the way. Yeah. Yeah, we need more times meeting outdoors on the North Downs Way. I think the world would be a happier place. I'm yeah. all for it. I'm all for it. Yeah. This is Denby's Vineyard, part of the family owned and run Denby's Estate. Now, the wines that are produced here have won multiple international awards, including the first ever gold for an English rosé. The vineyard backs onto the North Downs Way, where a new art installation, Radius, is to open soon. Created from locally sourced oak by artist James Tunnard, Radius will be engraved with poems and inscriptions from local poets and members of the public. Another sculpture worth seeing is the Optohedron, situated at Newlands Corner, a popular beauty spot with some of the best views over the Surrey Hills. 
This piece by artist Will Nash is inspired by the faceted structure of an insect's eye. Newlands Corner also offers plenty of woodlands to explore and has spectacular inspiring views across the Weald, the ridge of the South Downs. I've come here to meet Ali Clark, Programme Manager for Surrey Hills Art, to understand a bit more about the artwork you can find along the North Downs Way. Um, so the piece here uh, near Newlands Corner is the Optohedron by Will Nash. Okay. And Will's really fascinated by natural geometry and he created this whole form and then took se segments away to come up with the um, shape that you see here. And it's tightly packed with local wood and he really hopes that insects and small mammals will actually um, nest within the within the structure itself so it's definitely it's an artwork but it's also seating are there future plans for artwork along the north downs way yeah absolutely so um, we've got two more coming up very soon we have radius at denby's vineyard which is a lovely undulating um, bench of wooden battens that bear local people's words and also words from the local poets. So that's going to be really beautiful. And we also have a piece really near the Kent border portal that will be installed next year. At the foot of the trail here is Silent Pool, a spring-fed lake which gives its name to the world-famous gin. Also in Silent Pool, you'll find Albury Organic Vineyard and Mandira's Kitchen, which offers award-winning Indian meals made to family recipes. Delicious. Just a hop, skip and a jump away from the North Downs Way in the village of Compton is Watts Gallery, dedicated to the work of George Frederick Watts, who's widely considered to be the greatest painter of the Victorian era. Also a sculptor, he's sometimes referred to as England's Michelangelo. His wife, Mary Watts, is also a renowned designer who created the Grade 1 listed Terracotta Chapel, which is open to the public. I'm here at the Watts Gallery with Alistair Burton Shaw. And Alistair, I, I want to find out a bit more about this, this fascinating couple and, and the works that you've got on display here at the gallery. So we have 18 acres of glorious area of outstanding natural beauty countryside here. We've got a grade one listed chapel designed by Mary Watts. We've the artist's house designed by Sir Ernest George built in 1891 for the couple just up the hill here and of course we have these incredible galleries full of wonders of sculpture and painting. We have an incredible series of temporary exhibitions that runs all year round and, uh, and over in our Compton Potter's Arts Guild building we have a gorgeous tea shop shop and a rolling programme of contemporary exhibitions works for sale. So yes, there's lots to see and do here. So much to take in. Sadly, Alistair, I need to get on my way along the North Downs Way, but um, I will be coming back to try and take in more of everything you've got on offer. Thanks so much for having me. Please do. We look forward to seeing you and Lovely. enjoy the walk. Lovely to meet you. Farnham is where the North Downs Way comes to an end, or of course, where it begins if you're traveling the other way to Dover. The spot is marked by this beautiful sculpture by artists Andy Quirk and Graham Hart that depicts walking along the North Downs Way and was created at Utopia Forge in nearby Guildford. I've been joined by Guy Singer who I hope is going to give me a bit of a lowdown on walking in Farnham. Farnham is a fantastic place. Not only is it the start or finish points of three separate long distance ways, the North Downs Way obviously, the St Swithin's Way and the Greensand Way, but it's so close to the countryside, you only have to walk half a mile in any direction and you're out amongst the beautiful scenery. It's great. Guy, great to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, sadly, my exploration of the North Downs Way has come to an end and it's time for me to head back home on the train via Farnham. The North Downs Way is peppered with railway stations, so it's easy to do it in sections. The team are also creating routes that will take you from one station to another with easy to follow pathways from rail to trail. All the places I've visited along my journey are just a taster of what's on offer here along the North Downs Way. You can come visit just for the day or with all the great places to stay, you could make a weekend of it or even stay a little longer. So why not come and walk this ancient route for yourselves? 
and experience the beautiful landscapes that have been enjoyed by visitors and travellers through the ages, from the times of Chaucer's pilgrims right through to the present day.